Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Peter Brichtzin. I'm teaching math, physics, and computer science um, in the Gymnasium Ottobrunn uh, near to Munich. Um, I also have a lectureship for didactic of computer science at the Ludwig Maximilians University of Munich. And um, I'm author of school books in computer science as well. Today I'm talking um, about the gymnasium, Gymnasium Ottobrunn, the school I'm working at and its development in the past few years. Michael asked me to talk in English looking forward to the international podium discussion. It's my first talk in English, so sorry the speech is not free like Russell suggested this afternoon to his students. Why do I want to talk about the development of a single school? Uh, of course, I cannot come up with a perpetuum mobile or something revolutionary like that. And surely, you will be already familiar with some of the points I'm going to make in the following. But I think we will also become familiar with some new aspects in school development. Those new few points may be able to help gaining momentum in the development of your own institution, school or teacher training or government of education. Looking forward to the podium discussion, I will now try to convey my point of view on potential and limitations of information and communication technology in school. Preparing this talk, I used a mind map. It shows a bit of the complexity of school development. I will start first with some facts about the school I'm working at. The Gymnasium Ottobrunn, a high school near to Munich, has about 1,400 pupils and more than 100 teachers. Just having finished my traineeship as a teacher, I started teaching in 2000. Some processes of development had already been started, mainly triggered by certain new groups like the Creativity Group, the Clean Linus Group, and of course the group of ICT. All these groups tried to realize new ideas. Part of the ideas of the ICT group was the new hardware in the computer room. 15 new PCs. Now in 2030 the school has got two computer rooms and library with 55 PCs more than 100 laptops in four laptop classes, about 250 netbooks for a classmate project in grade 8 and for teachers, and still some more in certain special rooms. I'm sorry to have bored you with such dull numbers of hardware, but aside from the fact that they are easy to count, I think they are somewhat impressive. But what is actually a lot more important, along with every such investment came pedagogical innovation. When the new PCs arrived in 2000, a new thinking process was started. We wanted to conceptualize how to use them in lessons and what kind of competences the pupils need to use them in the first place. Very soon it became clear that media competence is not enough. We had to move to a more general level of competences. What the pupils needed was competence of methods. Thus, we developed a special curriculum according to which essential media and method skills were taught. 
In every grade the training was divided into small units and teachers in different subjects take on the task of teaching these important skills. Thus workload and time are distributed and most important for the pupils the new skills are consolidated by the exercise in different subjects and with different teachers. The competence training comprises the realization of a project in every grade. At this point the basic competence should already be internalized. The teacher can now concentrate on the content instead of the methods. For example, our skill units in grade 9. The teacher does not have to check the quality of literature sources, the rules of citation, project organization or layouting processes of presentation material. The pu pupils already know these things, at least in best case. Being able to draw on these methods and media competences, the hurdle for teachers to conduct projects has been lowered. In other words, using the new school internal curriculum on competences, conducting projects has become much easier. In 2003 we introduced laptop classes. In this classes pupils use their own laptops, especially in the main subjects German, math and foreign languages. The pedagogical concept of these laptop classes is based on the media and method curriculum but had of course to be expanded for this purpose. While the laptop classes depend on the parents money to buy individual laptops, in 8th grade we were able to finance every pupil her or his own netbook in 2009. This program was called the Classmate Project. Thus, the idea of laptop classes was spread. But we added further elements. For example, the learning days. Days without a common timetable, giving the pupils a lot of time for realis realization of projects. With the learning days, I switch to another branch of my mind map. Structures. Very important. Every school has external given structures, but also internal designable structures. In Bavaria, changing the school subject every 45 minutes is the standard. But recently more and more schools start to change to intervals of 90 minutes, called Doppelstundenmodell. The change is not easy. You cannot avoid controversial discussions within the school staff before such a decision. But in fact, I do not know of any school which has reversed this decision. They all realize that the learning atmosphere is much calmer, the learning process is very much supported. But this change in timetable structure has a great impact on teaching. Pupils can tolerate 30 or 40 minutes of teacher's monologue, but not 60 or 90 minutes. Consequently, you cannot stick to the same method the whole time. Variety in methods of teaching is obligatory. But can you measure variety in methods of teaching? Does the use of ICT force us to apply variable methods of teaching? 
Every year, Gymnasium Ottobrunn conducts an evaluation. The pupils' feedback to the statement, classes are interesting, and miscellaneous can be regarded as an example of typical answering behavior. The confirmation is shown by the green column, disagreement by the red, and blue indicates indifference. In the fifth grade, we see a high level of confirmation to the statement. This level decreases extremely in the following two years and leads to a minimum at the age of 13 to 16 years. Let's have a detailed look at the feedback of the eighth grade. Since our classmate project started 2010, the level of confirmation more than doubled. It's the green column. And the level of disagreement to the statement classes are interesting and miscellaneous was cut in half. In 2030, the levels are more or less equal to 2012. It is obvious that the satisfaction with the conduct of classes has increased strongly and so has the pupils' motivation. This increase is probably due to an increase in teaching method variability. This result is especially striking as at this age teachers have to deal with pupils in puberty, not the easiest clientele to handle. This example clearly shows the potential of ICT, but there are limitations. In other countries it may be different, but in Bavaria the administration keeps the school in a tight grip. To ex express it openly, I would like to be more autonomous. Firstly, autonomy in terms of instruction material. Learner-centered classes need more time. Time to gain their knowledge in a constructivist fashion. This is surely no loss of time. The result of learning is more lasting. Secondly, autonomy in terms of school timetable. For example, teaching subjects four hours a week for half a year, instead of two hours a week for one year. We implemented this for the subject of computer science. Here it takes time and exercise to get used to the syntax of a computer language. Practicing four hours a week instead of two hours is advantageous. Normally, schools aren't allowed to do this. But Gymnasium Ottobrunn has the status of a modus school, which leaves the school with more autonomy to experiment. But of course, not without supervision. A modus school has to submit an application for a scheme. If it is approved, you may implement it, then you have to evaluate it. If the evaluation shows a very positive result, eventually the scheme may be accessible to all schools. Thirdly, autonomy in terms of staff selection. A school should be able to select personnel according to its profile. I just heard uh, before in Finland, that's um, normal. But how can a lack of autonomy be considered a limitation to use of ICT? In education, many things can be associated with ICT. 
but there is no need to do so. You can have lessons focused on the teacher without ICT or with ICT using probably PowerPoint presentations. A lesson focused on the teacher is not in itself bad, but it should only be one method amongst others. Let us again switch to another branch of the mind map, software. Learning platforms like Moodle are software. You can use Moodle to save files, for example exercise sheets, but this does not really result in additional value for the pupil. You can as well put your sheets in the classroom. If you use Moodle instead for learning diaries, collaborative learning with wikis and forums, lectures and other activities, you get additional value. I'm not familiar with studies about the use of Moodle activities. I suppose that much more than half the teachers use Moodle only for saving files. Thus, they do not use the tool to its full potential. Saving files does not support individualization and self-responsibility during the learning process. But I won't spend more time talking to you about Moodle, because in this regard Austria seems to me to be quite advanced. I had my first training in the use of Moodle at the ELISA Academy here in Austria 10 years ago. Another aspect which has, in my opinion, not received enough attention is internal differentiation. In one class there are up to 30 children. 30 children means 30 completely different characters. Let's come up with ways to do justice to different interests, learning rates and capacities. Going a step into this direction, I like the concept of dialogical learning by Peter Gallin and Urs Ruf. According to this concept, you need a core idea for every topic. This core idea makes the topic accessible as whole in a motivational as well as a comprehensible way. Real contexts are important here. Based on this core idea, you develop so-called Aufträge, requests, with three important features. First, an introduction to the topic using an easy question. And successful beginning leads to high level of motivation. Second, something to discover. The requirement to find something new. The result of this is a rule, an abstract or something similar. Everybody has to resolve this part of the request. The time needed is very, very different. Third, a ramp, space for experiments, variation, connecting ideas and more. Very open, a playground for the learners with high capacities who are usually completely under-challenged. <coughs> Accompanied by individual feedback, sometimes a little help and always reflections, this type of request is a very good way to achieve internal differentiation. And ICT can be part of it, but is not necessarily so. Maybe rooms are important as well. I'd like to show you different settings. First, a lesson focused on the teacher. The pupils are learning synchrone. At least they should. 
Second, a lesson conducting by request is presented before. Only a few minutes after starting the request you can see a diversity in developing it because ideas, learning skills and velocity are individual. The learner-centered style enables the teacher to talk individual to single pupils. For example, analyze the mistakes in the last exam. It is better to leave the classroom for a private talk like this. But the learner-centered style doesn't work in every time. Sometimes the learner um, give a feedback. Oh, it's too difficult. Mr. Brichtsin, we need to calculate together an example to understand. So you divide the group. Perhaps there is a need of more differentiation. One group is learning fast and completely independent without teacher's help. Another is learning independent but needs sometimes teacher's help. And the third cannot continue without the teacher's hand because the basic knowledge is worse. The need of differentiation is obvious. There aren't three teachers, there's no need for three teachers. Because the majority works on his own. But school buildings constructed in thinking um, such settings can support a different learning. Actually, this idea is um, sometimes present by constructing new school buildings. The concept is called Lernlandschaften. All classes of one grade have one area together. There are no walls, only windows. Learners are working individual on their tasks. Teacher give feedback. In the middle there is a communication zone. Sure, an acoustic challenge. In Ottobrunn we will get a new school building with Lernlandschaften in two and a half years. I'm looking forward to this building. With Lernlandschaften I already reached the future. Of course, e-learning hardware like smartphones will have a high importance. And we always have to work on a high quality of education. Let me summarize a few points. ICT can be of value to processes of school development. ICT can be of value to a different culture of learner-centered education. But ICT is no guarantee for method variety in education. Individualization and differentiation is a key in education. ICT can help to realize it. I did not reach various topics of my mind map. Um, time is limited. Our main goal, the learners, I reached not directly. So I would like to finish with a few to the pupils by quoting Werner Hartmann. Vieles bleibt aber auch beim Alten. Lernen ist und bleibt ein anstrengender Prozess. Nicht alle Schülerinnen und Schüler sind intrinsisch zum Lernen motiviert. Die Nutzung von Technologien im Unterricht ist ein Muss, aber entscheidend verändert haben Radio, Fernsehen, Computer und Internet die Schule auch nicht. There is a lot of potential, but also limitations. Thank you very much.